The language of Cumbric is native to the north of England and the south of Scotland, a region which is known as Erhen Gogeth. Although the language of Cumbric has been long thought to be extinct, recent discoveries about the earliest of manuscripts from the northwest of Wales, specifically the earliest of manuscripts from the Kingdom of Gwynedd in the northwest of Wales has overturned this view. In short, this rediscovery allows the millions of people in the north of England and the millions of people in the south of Scotland who continue to hold on to their ancient Britain heritage to learn Cumbric as their mother tongue. That the Cumbric language is the native language of the north of England and that the Cumbric language is the native language of the south of Scotland will come as a surprise to many. Scots Gaelic is not the native language of the south of Scotland. English is not the native language of the north of England. To put a fine edge on this, the Anglo-Saxons from whom the English language derives did not start their invasions of Albion that is the island that we commonly know as Great Britain until the year 449 AD. Similarly the Scoti from whom the Scots Gaelic language derives originally came from Air that is from Ireland. But I should say also that the revival of Cumbric in the north of England and the south of Scotland is not about diminishing the significance of English and it is not about diminishing the significance of Scots Gaelic but instead about raising, that is reviving, the language of Cumbric. To illustrate this, in the Principality of Wales where the different dialects of Welsh are commonly known, Welsh speakers there are typically bilingual in their own Welsh dialect capacities. By that token, and also by the token of the knowledge that many Celtic language enthusiasts know Welsh as well as Scots Gaelic and Irish Gaelic, I should think that in particular in the south of Scotland that many Cumbric speakers will also ordinarily learn Scots Gaelic. So I would anticipate that in particular in the south of Scotland that the revival of Cumbric shall also bring with it an increased revival of Scots Gaelic and significantly it was a Scots Gaelic speaker who introduced to the people of Scotland at large the knowledge that a form of Old Welsh, that is, Cumbric, was native to the southern climes of Scotland and not Scots Gaelic. I am of course referring to Alastair Moffat, the former director of programmes of Scottish television and the renowned author of the celebrated book after in the Lost Kingdom, in which he reintroduced this idea. Alistair, an amateur historian in the very best meaning of the word amateur, who was brought up speaking Scots Gaelic, discovered in his studies that by far the oldest place names in the south of Scotland were not Scots Gaelic, but were a fourth Old Welsh. That form of Old Welsh we know today is Cumbric. To use commonly known measures to illustrate this, David I, King of Scotland in the 12th century, before being made King of Scotland, 
was raised to the title Prince of the Cumbrians. However, the lands to which this title is attached were not the lands of Cumberland in the northwest of England, as one might surmise, nor were they the lands of the post-1974 administrative county creation of the county of Cumbria. Instead, and to use names that are more reminiscent of modern Scotland to illustrate the point, they included lands such as modern-day Rothbyshire, Selkirkshire, Berwickshire, Peeblesshire and Lanarkshire. And they even included lands westward moving up towards Glasgow. So to defer to the pragmatic, just to illustrate how many people that the language of Cumbric may be relevant to, even in just the Scottish borders today, let's consider the saying as proud as a Scot. For somebody in the Scottish borders who has lived on the land since time immemorial, in the shires of Roxburgh, Selkirkshire, Berwickshire, Peeblesshire and Lanarkshire, if they don't remember aristocratic heritage, then chances are they derive of the ancient Britons of the Principality of Cumbria and before in those areas that we today remember as Southern Scotland. How these native Britons came to speak Scots Gaelic is to understand. With the Scoti aristocracy coming from Ireland and then predominating in local affairs, it's quite easy to consider the adage if you want to get on with the aristocracy, you must speak their language. David, Prince of the Cumbrians, who subsequently became David I, King of Scotland, spoke Scots Gaelic as did his father. So it is easy to see how Scot Gaelic filtered into the southern lands of Scotland. And of course, similar tokens can be used to describe how in the north of England, that many of Britons there adopted English rather than continue substantially with Cumbric as their native language. What is most curious is how Cumbric came to be preserved in the northwest of Wales. This is truly a tale of where East meets West. As a start point, I'll refer to the ancient Britain bards Taliesin and Aniran. It is commonly recognised worldwide that the writings of these two bards are the earliest literary tradition in Europe. The reason why the compositions of these two bards are so significant is that the manuscripts that preserve their compositions were written down in the Kingdom of Gwynedd in the northwest of Wales in no other hand but Cumbria. Taliesin and Aniran were recorded in script. As Taliesin's compositions are associated with the Kingdom of Regid, which is a region focused upon modern day Cumberland but was broader in its significance, that is, it is in the west of Irhem Gogleth, but it is not in modern day Principality of Wales. And the Niran's writings are associated with Egadotham, that is, the Gadotham, which were associated with modern day Lothian, Lothian recalling the ancient Briton king, King Lot. The questions are how did the manuscripts come to be recorded in Cumbric, in ancient kingdom of Gwynedd, in northwest Wales? And how was it overlooked that these were written down in Cumbric?
moi carries genen ninju tire thoral in osi pop kan nans mena thachi a gaus in kernuek the ni